Hello YouTube friends, Dr. Teresa here again. I'm following up on a second part of Ibuzu's comments to me and he mentioned he's never kept any kind of aquarium before but would be interested in raising dwarf seahorses. Well, although that's not impossible, there is definitely a lot of learning that has to happen up front. And here are some 10 things that come to mind that are going to require some research. First of all, most people who aren't familiar with dwarf seahorses or seahorses at all for that matter don't realize seahorses are ocean creatures. They have special needs including salt water. So that's something that is a key understanding. Now, there is a lot of great information on my channel, but also thousands and thousands of other channels that can help with the other research topics. I'm not going to go into any depth about them, but more or less just make a checklist for Ibuzu so he can get started if he thinks he's really serious about trying to raise dwarf seahorses. So first of all, number one, understand that seahorses are saltwater creatures. Number two, understand their needs and in particular their tank size. Most people recommend anywhere from two gallons to 10 gallon aquarium sizes, depending on the size of your herd. So make sure you investigate what's going to be best for you. Another key understanding, which applies both to fresh water and salt water, but is particularly key to salt water, is cycling, or a reference to the nitrogen cycle, understanding the process of waste turning into ammonia, the nitrite, the nitrate. So you're gonna to need to understand that and how to cycle a tank before getting started with dwarf seahorses. Another thing you'll need to find out about is a salt water testing kit. So along with that cycling, you are going to have to measure parameters to make sure that your dwarf seahorse tank was, is within an acceptable range. It sounds really tedious in the beginning, and it is until you get the hang of it, but coming in without any aquarium experience, it's really important that you have a key understanding of cycling and safe water parameters using a testing kit. Next, you have to understand the food needs of a dwarf seahorse. You have to be able to hatch out brine shrimp. So per your previous question, no, you should not just dump brine shrimp cysts into the aquarium. Now, if you can buy some live brine, baby brine shrimp from a local fish store, um, sure, you can use that, but it will get costly pretty fast. It's actually not that hard to hatch your own brine shrimp. But you do have to understand that that brine shrimp needs to be available on a daily basis. And if you want long-term success, you're even going to have to enrich that brine shrimp. Again, I have videos on this. There are tons of other videos on YouTube that you can check out. This is just a checklist of your research topics. Another thing you need to understand is that the dwarf seahorse tank needs to be cleaned daily or almost daily. You need to vacuum the bottom and perform regular water changes so that waste does not build up too much and throw the water parameters beyond what's acceptable and safe for dwarf seahorses. Another thing you have to think about is going on vacation. Because dwarf seahorses require daily feedings of live food, you're going to have to figure out how you're going to make that happen while you're away. Are you going to train someone on how to hatch brine shrimp? Are you going to use hatching dishes? Like I said, any of these things you can research and look up on YouTube, but understand your options and what you're getting into. Another thing that you have to consider is decorations. 
Um, again, there are plenty of videos, but you need to make sure if you're choosing artificial decorations that you are choosing saltwater safe decorations. You need to choose de decorations that won't build up too much detritus and are easy to clean, which can work against you in keeping water parameters in check if you have decorations that collect detritus really easy and are hard to clean. Or you have to determine if you're going to go the route of live macroalgae and understanding all that that entails and the dangers that that, that could impose. You also need to understand what are acceptable tank mates in a dwarf seahorse tank. And really, there aren't too many, and I recommend not having any tank mates at all. But again, this is something that you'll want to research. And then finally, it's recommended that you have a medicine chest of certain medications or treatments on hand for typical ailments that you might experience with dwarf seahorses. For example, here are some of my favorite items that I like to keep on hand. So there is a lot to understand. There's a really huge learning curve and it may take several months just to get things started and understood well enough to be successful with dwarf seahorses. And who knows, maybe you'll decide after seeing all that's required to learn that dwarf seahorses are not for you. And that's totally okay. That's even better to find out now up front. I hope you found this video helpful and if it in any way gets you thinking about whether or not dwarf seahorses are going to be something for you, then I have been successful here. Thanks so much for watching. I always appreciate you with me. Take care.